Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Alcasan's Act 537 Plan Special Study Public Meeting. I am Joey Valerian, Director of Communications here at Alcasan. It's my pleasure to welcome you tonight. We have some very exciting things to share with you about our new regional tunnel system and its associated infrastructure that we will be building soon. Before we get started tonight, uh, run through a couple of housekeeping items. The session is being recorded. Um, we recorded the one this morning. We're recording this one tonight uh, to capture the uh, different audiences um, that we, we would hope to have. Um, both will be posted tomorrow. Um, if you are on Zoom watching us and you would like to ask a question, please use the chat feature um, in Zoom. We will answer those questions at the end of the presentation as they're received. Um, we'll read your question off um, and then provide you an answer. And then we also have a few people who will be providing uh, public comment tonight. Um, and we'll do that towards the end of uh, the presentation as well. Um, my colleagues here with me tonight are Kim Kennedy, Director of Engineering and Construction, uh, Mike Lichta, who is Director of Regional Conveyance, um, and Michelle Baez, who is Director of Environmental Compliance. Um, before we get started, one last thing. Um, if those of you who have signed up for public comment, if you are not watching me on Zoom right now, please make sure that you log back home so we are able to unmute you at the appropriate time. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Michelle now. Thank you, Joey. Good evening. On behalf of the Alpha Sam Board and our Executive Director, Arletta Scott Williams, we welcome you to our public meeting on the Regional Tunnel, tunnel System component of the Clean Water Plan and more specifically, the associated Act 537 special study. I'm Michelle Bies, the Director of Environmental Compliance. Today's agenda includes a short presentation followed by public comment and questions and answers, as Joey explained. This is the second meeting today. There was a meeting prior at 10 a.m. this morning. This meeting is part of a series of public meetings aiming to build community awareness collecting input and responding to questions relative to the Clean Water Plan and the regional tunnel system. Many public meetings have taken place to date. Um, our, the, the, last, the latest meeting was held on February 1st, 2022. It focused on providing an update to the Clean Water Plan implementation. The public meeting is focused today on what we refer to as the Act 537 special study. This is a necessary step towards design construction of the regional tunnel system. Let me tell you a little bit about Alcasan. Alcasan stands for the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority. Alcasan provides wastewater treatment service to 83 communities in Allegheny County, including the city of Pittsburgh. We currently own and operate a 59 acre wastewater treatment plant as shown we treat up to 250 million gallons per day and operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We have 90 miles of sanitary sewer and combined sewer lines conveying wastewater to the treatment plant. Alcasan is funded completely by our ratepayers. When you're out walking along the trails or the waterfronts, you may notice a sign along our rivers and streams. These signs are for public notice to our that our existing sewer system can become overloaded during rainstorms or snow melts and diluted untreated sewage overflows at these points. During a typical year, approximately 9 billion gallons of sewage mixed with rainwater overflow into our waterways. This problem is not new but the region is required to work towards improving and protecting the quality of the waterways as part of the federal consent decree to comply with the United States Environmental Protection Agency's combined sewer overflow policy. Alcastan's Clean Water Plan is a comprehensive plan for full compliance, which is estimated to cost $3.6 billion. What you will hear today is part of the Clean Water Plan, which is estimated to cost $2 billion. 
This can be looked at as what we are doing now and what there will be more to come later. Kim Kennedy, the Director of Engineering Construction, will talk to you about the parts of the Clean Water Plan that are being planned and implemented as what you would term as now, and those that tie into the Act 537 Special Study. Thank you, Michelle. As part of the Federal Consent Decree, Alpacan has developed a long-term plan to address sewer overflows. The Clean Water Plan was approved in 2020 as part of the Modified Consent Decree. The first phase of the plan must be completed by the end of 2036, and this will involve the $2 billion investment in 2010 dollars. The plan implementation will reduce sewer overflows and provide other benefits, <clears throat> benefits such as jobs and opportunities for economic development along the rivers. The Clean Water Plan includes four components, as shown here. First, we have the Wastewater Treatment Plant expansion, which will increase treatment capacity up to 600 million gallons per day. Construction on the plant expansion started in 2020. Second, we have regionalization. Regionalization involves municipalities transferring ownership of sewers to Alcasan to make it easier to address operation and maintenance, uh, and maintenance issues at a regional level. This program is voluntary for participation by municipalities and only addresses sewers that are 10 inches and greater in diameter and receive flow from more than one municipality. Thirdly, we have source control. The source control aims at preventing excess water from entering the sewer system, and Alpasan is incentivizing the source control projects through a financial program known as GROW, the Green Revitalization of Our Waterways grant program. Since GROW's inception in 2016, the, GROW, the program has offered grant awards to 136 projects in the Alpasan service area. And the fourth and final component of the Clean Water Plan is the regional tunnel system and the wet weather pump station, which leads us to today's main topic, the Regional Tunnel Systems Act 537 Plan Special Study. Included in the modified consent decree were opportunities for adaptive management. This is flexibility in the implementation of the plan that helps or that allows Alcasan to adjust the split of our investment between components based on new information. It's important to point out that proposed projects must be able to meet equivalent CSO control performance to be approved by the agencies for inclusion in the plan. Alcasan negotiated a modified consent decree that spreads the cost of compliance over a longer time frame. Following submission of the wet weather plan that estimated full compliance costs to be about $3.6 billion, Alcasan negotiated the modified consent decree that managed affordability concerns by spreading the cost over a longer time frame. The modification split the implementation into two major phases. The first phase is the what we're talking about right now, the clean water plan, $2 billion clean water plan. And that phase is to be completed by 2036. The second phase, which will be capturing the sewer overflows that aren't captured in the first phase, will be developed beyond 2036 based upon post-construction performance monitoring of the projects built in phase one. In contrast to the original consent decree mandated, mandated completion of the entire 3.6 billion was by 2026. Um, so the modification, the modified consent decree greatly improved ratepayer affordability. Alcasan's rate strategy manages the cost to ratepayers. By implementing multi-year modest rate increases through 2036, Alcasan can reduce our long-term borrowing costs, provide rate increase stability, and provide for transparent budget planning. 
Elysium's board implemented a 7% rate increase for, 20, for 2022 through 2026. This year, the cost of Alcasan wastewater treatment and conveying services will be around $549 for a typical residential customer, or about $1.50 per day. Alcasan appreciates the impacts of the rate increases on our low income households and has increased the Clean Water Assistance Fund to $40 per quarter. More information on the Clean Water Assistance Fund can be found at dollarenergy.org. So today's focus. Today marks the official release of the Act 537 Plan Special Study and the Uniform Environmental Report for the regional conveyance facilities. The term regional conveyance facilities consists of a wet weather pump station and the regional tunnel system. The Uniform Environmental Review discusses the temporary and long-term environmental and community impacts of the new facilities. Today also marks the beginning of the public comment period. There will be 60 days for our agencies to review the documents and comment and 30 days for the general public. What is an Act 537 plan special study? Well, the Pennsylvania Sewage Facilities Act was enacted to require municipalities to develop and implement comprehensive official plans that provide for their current and future wastewater management needs. Alcasan approved the Alcasan's approved 537 plan was developed in 1996 on behalf of its 83 customer municipalities. It was amended in 2018 to address the expansion of the wastewater treatment plant currently under construction. A special study is a key component of the permitting process that will allow Alcasan to proceed with the construction of the regional tunnel system as required in our modified consent decree. The study will also have to be adopted by the nine municipalities as shown in this figure um, along the tunnel route. Alcasan is working with these municipalities to adopt the plan. So here's what the study addresses. It is a planning level document. It's a document that's based on the Clean Water Plan and the preliminary basis of design report for the regional tunnel system. It, the study does not provide, evaluate, or approve the specific details of the tunnel system or the wet weather pump station. These will be addressed through subsequent design and permitting processes. Additional public engagement will occur during the detailed design phases. We will go over um, the a few highlights associated with the plan, specifically underlined items on this slide. And um, as Joey said, details are provided in the full study, which is available at the Alcasan uh, website, along with a shorter companion document. And then this is just a nice graphic to show that Alcasan has been preparing and updating wastewater plans since 1996. And this 537 plan special study is just our most recent effort. Now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Mike Lichty to talk in detail about the facilities. Mike. Thank you, Kim. Let's first talk about the existing facilities. Existing Alcasan system was constructed in the late 1950s to the highest engineering standards of the day. The existing system was designed to capture dry weather sewage flow through a series of regulators and deep tunnel interceptors and send that flow to the Alcasan wastewater treatment plant for treatment. Approximately 30 miles a deep tunnel interceptor was constructed in bedrock, approximately 100 feet deep. Prior to the construction of the Alcacian system, all sewage went directly to the rivers. Changes to the Clean Water Act in the 1990s, including EPA's combined sewer overflow policy, required that municipalities and wastewater treatment authorities capture 
significant amounts of wet weather flows and limit or eliminate discharges to the rivers. The proposed regional tunnel will capture the combined sewer flows and reduce annual discharges by over 7 million gallons. How will Alcacian accomplish this? New regulators will be constructed on municipal combined sewer overflows and will capture the sewage prior to discharge into the river. These regulators will send flow through consolidation sewers to a drop shaft, thence to the regional tunnel, and then to the Alcacian treatment plant for processing. The new regional tunnel will be approximately 150 feet deep and will be constructed in bedrock. This places the new tunnel about 50 feet below the existing Alcacian deep tunnel interceptors and about 120 to 130 feet below the three rivers. The new regional tunnel will be up to 18 feet in diameter. It will have a storage capacity of 160 million gallons. The finished tunnel will be lined with concrete liner plates, similar to the photo on the left. The top three figures here show the three types of near surface facilities that will be constructed to send flow to the regional tunnel. Regulators will be constructed on the municipal combined sewer overflows. These regulators will capture the combined sewer overflow and send this flow via consolidation sewer to shafts, which will drop the flow into the regional tunnel. Shafts are also needed to retrieve and launch the tunnel boring machine. The tunnel boring machine that's proposed to be used will be similar to that used during the Port, Port Authority's North Shore Connector Project. The plan includes approximately 45 regulators and approximately four miles of consolidation sewers. The top three figures show the facilities as they are being constructed. Following construction, sites will be restored to their original or better condition, similar to the photo on the bottom. This figure shows the regional tunnel as currently proposed. The tunnel system will be constructed as three projects. The Ohio River Tunnel, o, or ORT, shown in green, the Allegheny River Tunnel, or ART, shown in blue, and the Monongahela River Tunnel, or MRT, shown in orange. These three projects will be phased and will need to be completed by 2036 to comply with the federal consent decree. The tunnels, when completed, will flow to a new 120 MGD wet weather pump station located here at the Alcacian treatment plant. The location of near surface facilities, drop shafts and regulators, are shown as squares on this figure. These will be constructed on large municipal combined sewer overflows. <clears throat> the location of these facilities is largely fixed by the location of these overflows. In conjunction with the Alpacian Wastewater Treatment Plant and other flow management and reduction improvements, the regional tunnel reduced overflows by approximately 7 billion gallons per year. The newly, newly constructed system will also stop sewage overflows to sensitive areas such as riverfront parks, recreational areas, boat launches, marinas, and areas near drinking water intakes. This figure shows the spatial distribution of combined sewer overflows in the Alcacian system. The vertical bars represent the amount of overflows to the rivers at each location, totaling 7 billion gallons. 
The interim clean water plan to be completed by 2036 will virtually eliminate these bars and the corresponding discharges of sewage going to the rivers. I'm going to turn it back over to Kim Kennedy, who's going to uh, discuss the alternative analyses. So the proposed facilities that Mike just discussed were selected based on extensive work. The study summarizes the alternatives analysis conducted as part of basin planning, the ongoing flow reduction program, as well as most recently preliminary planning. This graphic illustrates the process which involved the evaluation of over 20 system-wide alternatives. And here is our schedule. Implementation will span 15 years. This schedule is driven by the schedule put forth in our modified consent decree. It has to be completed by 2036. About a year after construction is needed for commissioning and startup of the facilities. The first projects are the Ohio River Tunnel and the Wetwater Pump Station. Design for the Ohio River Tunnel started in late 2021. Design will take over two years to complete, and construction is anticipated to start in January of 2025 and last through the end of 2028. But again, we need that additional year for commissioning and startup. Of course, uh, the this, this schedule is subject to change um, as design and permitting progresses. So where are we now? We have been working with our municipal customers on the 537 plan special study, and we are now ready for today. The official public release as part of the public participation process. We are asking for comments on the 537 plan to be submitted within the next 30 days so that we may develop responses and include all of your comments and the responses in our final submission to DEP. We are working towards a goal of submitting the plan to DEP this summer in either June or July. So there are multiple methods that you can provide your input on this plan. A reminder, the full plan, as well as the companion document are available on the website at alpasan.org. Comments received today will be collected and treated the same as a written comment. You can submit and the um, functionality to submit on our website is now live. So you can submit your comments on the website, email them directly to us at public.relations at alpasan.org or mail them to the address shown here to the attention of public relations. Hard copies of the plan can also be viewed at each of the municipal buildings for the eight municipalities that are along the tunnel route, as well as in the city of Pittsburgh in the city planning department. Hard copies are also available at four libraries as shown on this figure, and that's at the Allegheny Branch, Northside, Southside, Lawrenceville, and Hazelwood. After the 537 plan is complete, there will be continued opportunities for engagement regarding the regional tunnel system during final design and construction. To learn more about the specifics, ask questions, and find out about upcoming meetings and events, Please stay engaged by visiting our website and signing up for to follow our updates, and then of course following Alcasan on social media. So it is now time to have some of our um, public comments, and then after the public comment period, we will move into questions, which can be entered into the chat. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, remind everyone, um, if you do have questions or comments, please do enter them in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. It is now time for us to, uh, to do the public comment uh, portion of tonight. I believe I did see Helen is our first speaker. Helen, you can unmute yourself now. And you should be able to speak. Hello, no, Ellen, no, go ahead. Earlier this month, the UN Secretary General gave this call to action. 
Today's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's report is an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. With fact upon fact, this report reveals how people and the planet are getting clobbered by climate change. The facts are undeniable. This abdication of leadership is criminal. What is criminal is Alcasan's spending of ratepayer billions on tunnels without addressing climate resilience. My name is Tassie Beisers. I have represented the Pennsylvania Interfaith Impact Network in the Our Water campaign for nearly a decade. We have represented the public by beseeching Alcasan to take a green first approach in spending ratepayer billions. There are cities that did not abdicate leadership. Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Kansas City. You could learn from their success at continually reducing the cost of managing stormwater above ground. And then there's the leadership in Syracuse. Joni Mahoney, a Republican, ran for Onondaga County Executive on a platform of Save the Rain. She knew there had to be a lower cost way of complying with their consent decree. There is now a culture of green infrastructure in that region. 300 projects done, capturing 200 million gallons of stormwater. What I really want to talk about is a gray project, a storage facility that they are so proud of. They put it under a parking lot, the trolley lot on county property and designed it to be gravity fed. They are very, very proud of their problem solving skills. We have a piece of county property and it's right next door to the Elkisan plant, the old penitentiary. You wanna know how deep the hole would need to be if you use that property to store the sewage you intend to put into 15 miles of tunnel? I'll tell you how deep, 20 feet, just 20 feet. You have to ask yourself, why is Alcasan so wedded to 15 miles of tunnels and the fossil fuels needed for pumping when they could explore other ways to store that untreated sewage? You have to ask yourself, have they become confused as to who the stakeholders are in this $2 billion project? Is it the companies who will be paid to drill and build these 20th century tunnels? Or is it the 21st century Allegheny County residents and their children and grandchildren who, be, who will be living with the results of Alcasan's leadership? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we have Tom Hoffman. Tom, there you are. You should be able to unmute yourself now. I have unmuted myself. Um, so first I'd like to, I've worked a long time with Tassie. I'd like to echo her thing, her statement as well. Um, you know, with, with the climate change that's happening now, spending two billion, three billion without considering the, uh, the uh, climate implications just does not seem like a, a proper, a proper thing. But uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was I feel glad that you're having these meetings where you're reaching out um, to people and getting uh, public comment. But um, I, I, I just have concerns about the uh, open and transparent uh, nature of Alcasan. Um, I've been to a lot of Alcasan meetings and for a long time you went through a long process uh, displaying a tunnel plan where you had uh, tunnels under all three rivers, um, taking it down to uh, Alcasan. And then you signed a consent decree and the ink was barely dry on that when you brought out this new plan with a tunnel that goes under downtown. Now, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I don't play one on television. So I have no idea whether that's a better, a better uh, uh, plan or a worse plan. No idea. But what I do know is that 
you didn't come up with it in the couple of weeks between the um, the time the consent decree was uh, signed and when that was released. Uh, you must have been working on that for a long time. That much I do know. So um, I feel like there, you know, there. I'm hoping that these meetings will have, you know, more uh, public participation, more openness. But um, I feel like there's, you know, um, you haven't done that in the past. Um, and, and I know you're required to um, put together a municipal advisory committee. Um, the municipalities had never had a seat at the Alcasan board level. Um, and I think you need to make sure that that committee that you do have is working well, um, which is not what I hear from some people I know that are on it. Um, but I really think it's time that um, our county executive or our mayor appoint an elected uh, municipal leader to be on the um, be on the Alcasan board. Because if you look at where those where those uh, drop shafts are, it's in all those river communities, and they really they deserve a say in that. Um, Tom, can you wrap it up, please, sir? We're getting close to the three minutes. I'm finished. Thank you very much. We about that. Yeah. Thank you. And next we have John Stephen, and you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity uh, to speak tonight in your uh, presentation. Um, I'm John Stephen, uh, coordinator of the Negley Run Watershed Task Force um, and a uh, founder of the Friends of the Riverfront and an Aspenwall resident. Um, I just really want to emphasize the importance of uh, community engagement and participation in the design process as you move forward. Um, clearly, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that the city and the region have begun to uh, see the riverfronts as their front door and clearly your you know the tunnel project will uh, be underneath that uh, riverfront front door and a lot of communities and neighborhoods have become very active and engaged in designing um, uh, better access to the rivers and the green spaces the Negley Run Watershed Task Force the Allegheny River Trail Park um, the Gertie's Run Watershed and Gertie's Woods, Millville Riverfront Park, the River Life Project downtown, I could go on and on. Uh, but, but the point being is that your work needs to be able to integrate seamlessly with these community visions in order for it to, uh, uh, to not disrupt efforts for equitable community access uh, to green space and to the rivers. So please um, make sure you accelerate and involve the communities more than you know, just this fine meeting tonight, but it might take Alcasan going to more community design meetings and sharing ideas. I participated in a few meetings uh, in um, Lawrenceville uh, prior to this um, at the request of uh, Councilwoman uh, Deb Gross, and we need a lot more of those types of stakeholder meetings. So please consider that. And also um, you know, pursuant to the comments of the previous commenters about uh, resiliency and climate change, really work hard to integrate the adaptive management principles as you move forward. I know this is a huge project, billions of dollars, but there is time. Maybe, you know, uh, a lot of innovation can occur if you are working and engaging with communities and uh, professionals and academics. So um, I know there's some restrictions on applying those, but uh, be uh, really, uh, innovative and encouraging yourself to, uh, to apply those principles that this project moves for. I look forward to reading as much of the plan as I can and uh, providing some uh, written comments in the next uh, 30 days. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. So that's all of the public comment we had scheduled tonight. Um, we wanna give the rest of the attendees an opportunity to uh, put any questions or comments in the chat that we can address. Um, so we will mute ourselves on this end for just a few moments to give everyone a chance. Thank you.
just remind everyone once more um, that we do have an opportunity if you have a question or comment to put it into the chat. I want to remind everyone too while I'm thinking of it. Um, there is the possibility, uh, we do have the opportunity, excuse me, to uh, enter your public comment on our website. Um, we have a special page for the Acts 537 Plan Special Study. Um, you can email that as well to public.relations at alphasan.org, or you can mail it to us here at the plant. Um, either way. So we'll give it just a few more minutes to see if anyone has anything and we'll go from there. Thank you, everyone. Okay, everyone, uh, this is the fact where you're going to have anyone uh, put anything in tonight. So again, we thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please keep up with us on social media, also on our website, uh, and we look forward to seeing everyone again soon.